Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Should I say Hosanna? I'll tell you. I think we should. It's Palm Sunday. It is indeed, guys. Palm Sunday. Hosanna. Wow. Wave those palms around if you got them. Praise the Lord. Next week, we know what that celebration's all about. I hope you know what that celebration is. We got Easter coming, right? That's right. I'm looking forward to that. I hope you are too. We're just going to talk for just a little while to get some more people in here. I'll tell you who I am. I'm Will. I am the founder of Truth Inspired, and we're going to do a little bit of Bible study, but I'm going to stop you from scrolling right now because I said Palm Sunday, but guess what? I've got some other things to talk about too, and I'm actually commanding that people pay attention today, and I'm telling you why it's important. You know why it's important? Well, let's just start out from long ago. I'll tell you, you ever have a teacher or someone that taught you well? Maybe started telling you how to do something that you still do today? Yes. Okay. Don't you have to learn things in life before you can actually get it right? And even then, sometimes you mess it up. Of course. Especially if you try to do it on your own, right? That's right. That's a good way to get in trouble fast, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I thought y'all would like that one. But I'll tell you, it's something because everybody does things different. Oftentimes, we learn from our parents and we get things that they do. They, their traditions and their ways of doing things, they pass on to us and we pass it on to our children and we move forward. And that's how kind of like a circle of life, right? Right. You got it. That's how that works, guys. Well, I told you who I am and I'm telling you right now again, my name's Will, again, founder of Truth Inspired. And the reason I'm talking to you and telling you not to scroll or to go away is because we're going to do a little bit of prayer. We're going to do a little bit of study and we are going to find out why it is a command that you love one another. We are going to talk about what it is that Jesus had to say. And we're going to, well, we're going to celebrate as we always do. Perfect Palm Sunday. Got to celebrate God, right? That's right. That's it. Getting ready for Easter. I can't wait for that. Before we do that, though, just so you know, if you got your Bible, you can turn to John 15, 1 through 17. All right. That's where we're going to be at today, focusing mainly on John 15, 5, just so you guys know. But I'm going to pray before we do anything, because that's how we start all of our prayer, our stuff as prayer. I believe prayer is the way to do things. Matthew 6, 9 through 13 is where the Lord teaches us how to pray. So we always say the Lord's Prayer. If you have requests, you can reach us. We're truth.inspired at yahoo.com, and we'll be glad to pray for you. We also, if you have any testimonies that you'd like to share with us, please do so. We love to get testimonies to post on the pages and to just see, because it's so exciting to see what God can do. You know, we oftentimes have prayer requests and we talk about what's wrong in the world, but very few times as people step forth with their testimonies and realize that once they've gotten through something, that's exactly what it becomes, a testimony, that's a right. test of your faith. And we need more of those to share because that's exactly what Truth Inspired is. In this crazy world, we want to inspire others. Amen. And I don't know any other way to inspire others than to share the love that is Jesus. And you guys, I love every one of you. I appreciate you being here. I want to help you if you have any questions or anything with these things that we're talking about. If you're not saved, if you don't understand what we're talking about in any shape or form, again, truth.inspired at yahoo.com. I will be glad to talk with you and you know how that works. We just email each other and then after we do that, hopefully we'll start getting some answers because once you give yourself to God, he starts showing the way. That's right. And that's what we always want to do is to use it through his will, not ours, his way, not ours. All right, let's go ahead and get praying. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus, please deliver us from evil. We need you more than ever. I'm Stop right there in that prayer because it's so important that you deliver us from evil. We need you, God. This world is really crazy, and the best inspiration in the world is to just come to you both for praise and for help and for anything. There's nothing too big or too small, God. We come to you in Jesus' name always for strength, energy, and guidance. Lord, please help us today as we read, and on this Palm Sunday, let someone perhaps get something out of our lesson that they didn't know or something that might bring somebody even to you for all we know. You're in control, not us. 
but we ask that we nonetheless do your will and continue to worship you and do what needs to be done. I ask that you help the people that are sick. There's quite a few of them out there right now. You know every one of them. Let them know someone is praying for them right now. Let them feel your presence and know there's prayers going out to them. Father, I ask for those who's passed this week that their families be blessed. There's quite a few of those that's happened. Personally, I know I've had three deaths in, that's in my family and friend circle, and we just want to pray for the entire families when that happens, but know that it's a celebration of life because thank you, Lord. I know these people that passed, at least in my family and that we knew, we're all saved, so I believe they're with you right now, which is what the goal is to get to you one day. So, Lord, please help us to get there and be with those families and anyone who's in any kind of trouble of any kind, regardless of what it might be, any kind of sickness or anything of the world's got them down. Let them know that you can turn it into a testimony and that you are with them. Show them the right way. Get them through it and help them, God. There's so many people right now that need you and so many things going on. We need you more than ever, Lord. Let your presence be known this week and let us just continue to grow closer to you. We thank you for everything. Again, help us on this Palm Sunday to know how we can remain in you always and to continue to grow spiritually in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray always. Strength, energy, and guidance. Amen, amen. Amen. All right, guys, this is my commandment that you love one another. I was going to play a little bit this morning for you, but I thought it'd be better to just kind of say the words to that a little bit. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Quite something, huh? Anybody ever hear that song? Maybe sing it when you were a kid? I know that song. Ah, there you go. Okay, you know that song. Well... What what is the commandment? What is it exactly we're talking about? What 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 am I even on? To, in you know we're talking about love. We always do, and we've been in John. But what's the commandment? Does anybody know? We know that you're supposed to do what? To love one another. There you go. I basically gave it to you in the song, didn't I? <laughs> If you look at John 15, 1 through 17, like I said, that's where we're going to get our text this morning. Um, I'm going to get Harry to read that for me real quick, just so that you have an idea of where we're at. So go ahead and read that for me. I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he will take away. And every one that beareth fruit, he will purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you are clean by reason of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abide in the vine, so neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If any one abide not in me, he shall be cast forth as a branch, and shall wither, and they shall gather him up, and cast him into the fire, and he burneth. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask whatever you will, and it shall be done unto you. In this is my Father glorified, that you may bring forth very much fruit, and become my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love as I also have kept my Father's commandments, and do abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be filled. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love than this no man hath, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do the things that I command you. I will not now call you servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth. But I have called you friends, because all things whatsoever I have heard of my Father, I have made known to you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and have appointed you that you should go and should bring forth fruit, and your fruit should remain, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another." Wow, there's a lot there. I could keep going on and on. I tell you, you know, that's one thing about the Word of God. In just one little area, sometimes you can get 
so many things that can lead you and help you in so many situations. I think that's why if you open up the Bible randomly, oftentimes the Holy Spirit makes it so you land on something that may very well solve the problem you're currently dealing with. Right. You use other people's issues and other things that's happened that's written right here in documentation and some way, somehow, often it connects to what your testimony is that you'll have when you get through life and whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. I like that whenever we see things like this. But I'm not going to go through all this and keep you all day long. I know I'd just lose everybody if I did that. But I'm already lost whenever it comes to the world and when it comes to crazy. And what we need to do is be found, right? So let's find our way to the verse that I was telling you about, which is the main memory verse. If you'll read... Fifteen five. 15, five. <clears throat> I am the vine, you the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same beareth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. Wow, without me you can do nothing. Oh, that's powerful. That is, that's very powerful. And what happens whenever you try to do it on your own? You fall short. That's it. Isn't it nice to know you got somebody there to grab your hand? That's right. Well, I tell you, that's what Jesus, God, I tell you, he had the plan and he was telling us about it, was he not? That's right. That's a wonderful thing. Verse 1 and 2 is where you're going to find them talking about I am the true vine. Um, before we do that, just so that if anybody doesn't know, when you talk about abiding, that's the same thing. It's uh, basically a good way to describe, you know, um, being in him, mm -hmm. remaining in him. Keeping him in the front of your thoughts. Yeah, you uh, and there's there's different ways that you can abide in him. Specifically, we're going to talk about that today a little bit in his love, in the word, and in the midst of conflict. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's all that has to do with that fifteen one through twenty five. Um, but you know, when you're talking about that, I talked about abiding, and I talked about how that works in terms of um, remaining. And remember, I said something about your family tree or about learning from your parents a little earlier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You get things from your parents, right? Right. They pass it on. You move it forward. Get things. You know different things about your heritage and everything which you find interesting and stuff like that. It kind of gives you identity mm -hmm. in your family. Right. You know, we're all impacted by how we're, we're learn things, right? Right. Well, that's kind of a little bit of what we're looking at here when we start talking about the vine and we start talking about the way that this is going to be working and remaining in it. Because once you learn something and the way that you live your life is also not only going to be the way that you're going to continue to be in life, but the way other people will grow and learn from you as well. Right. They'll and see pass it, in it you. on and goes forth and you get the idea. Um, you know, I think it's very interesting that uh, when we're looking at these things, that Jesus is talking, and when he says, you, you see that it's saying, I am the vine, he's talking about himself. He didn't say that he was like a vine. He said he was the true vine. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really neat, because he's the one and only way to the Father. Mm -hmm. That That's a big deal. And we're back to this metaphor thing. I know a lot right. of people, that's why a lot of people don't read the Bible, actually. They get they, confused. Between the begots and the metaphors, they start to get lost. But right. at the same time, if you listen to them, you can usually kind of think. and It's picture. pretty straightforward. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of picture what's going on. He's talking to him as the source of spiritual life. Right. I mean, he's the true one and, uh, you know, the genuine vine itself. Right. Does that make sense? I hope that's kind of helping you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, the vine is the source of everything that the fruit needs to be healthy. That's right. You See, you get an idea now. Um, it's important because we, just like the Father and the Son are connected to each other with that relationship, mm -hmm. we need to be connected the same way. Mm -hmm. And we can do that through Jesus. Right. That's That's our connection there. And, you know, there's one thing about that, though. Once you find God, that's a wonderful thing, okay? And that's what our goal is, to get people to God through Jesus. And you understand, like, we're coming up on Easter. Mm -hmm. Let people know what that is. But if you don't understand the resurrection, we're going to talk about that next week even more. But more importantly, you know, if you guys aren't saved, you don't understand, please, again, you're welcome to email us, truth.inspired.yahoo.com. I would love to talk with you. That being said, when you do this, that's not where it stops, you got to learn what God is and you got to learn 
how the connection is and your connection to God through Jesus needs to strengthen on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's going to make that happen. And guess how that usually happens through test. Right. Um, but he'll get you through it and he won't put you through more than you can handle. Now, why am I saying that you have to know all this or this is important? Well, it goes right back to this verse again. The father's primary concern is going around fruitfulness. You know, you're talking about every branch connected to the vine has to fulfill its purpose. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. If you if you don't do that, then you're taken away from the rest of the tree or the rest of the v, the rest of the vine, the rest of the uh, volunteers that are doing what they need to do to help and do right. what needs to be done. You know, right. to make the main branch go forth. Right? right. Right. We have to all work together for the sole purpose to do and fulfill the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. A church functions when when its members are all there helping one another to do what to abide in Christ and live by the word of God. There's back to those three things I was talking about earlier that could be a whole sermon by itself. Abiding in his love, with, in his love, abiding in his word, abiding in the midst of conflict, and, you know, in his love, word, and midst of conflict. We've been talking about all three of them already, have we not? I mm -hmm. said testimony, didn't I? Mm -hmm, right. I said love, didn't I? And his word is exactly what we're doing right now and what we're reading. He's telling us how it's important that we do things. Well, what important thing is that? Well, you've already read that as well. This is my commandment that you love one another, that your joy may be full. Your joy is not going to be full until you have Jesus in your life and you start to grow with him and you're living for God. It's not enough to just accept him. You also have to be pruned. You have to be taken care of. You have to do what needs to be done because you have to be connected so that the vine can fulfill its purpose. Otherwise, it takes away. You know, a fruitless branches are set aside by the gardener when they prune, correct? Right. When they do that, it's not a way to punish the, you know, that particular thing exactly. It's a way so that it can make the others grow forth and make more fruit. Mm -hmm. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. If it's dead, it needs to come off. Well, yeah. You see how that works? It leads to even getting more fruit. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't need to be sitting here thinking that you're saved and then not go forth and actually produce fruit. Right. You need to be saved and then your life needs to be changed as well. And any opportunity you have to help others and prune in their lives in ways that things happen, maybe where you get involved with somebody and you can help them and do things, mm -hmm. guess what happens? You're loving them the way God loves us. Right. That's a big deal. Being we're back, productive. Yeah, we're back to the abiding, are we not? Right. Yeah, we're back to doing what needs to be done. And the Holy Spirit's how we know and understand what to do because you'll feel that feeling. You'll know whenever it's something God's wanting you to do. Mm -hmm. It's just something that happens. And until you actually are filled with the Spirit, I can't really explain that to you. It's a feeling that you get when you talk with God. It's a feeling that you live every day, and it's a comforter. Right. It's just that exactly, right? Right. Well, and I think some people get scared when they think about trying to be productive as a Christian because they think, what if I say or do the wrong thing? But when you read where Christ says to without him, you can do nothing, when you know you have to lean on him for that, then that productivity comes forth naturally through your relationship with Christ. It, it just happens because you're relying on him to open your well, mouth and, and, he's, and do what you need to do. Verse four, I mean, he's saying, he's <clears throat> emphasizing disciples cannot bear fruit without staying connected to right, Jesus. Right, right. So, you know, you're always already seeing that. A branch simply can't produce fruit of itself. Fruit only grows when it abides in the vine. Right. If you take a branch down from a tree, it's not going to make new fruit. <laughs> that, that's right. I mean, it, it just doesn't work that way. Now, I will say this. I've had somebody come to me and say, well, what about some of these things that you pull off and then you put them in a cup of water and they start to grow roots on them and they start to do, you know what? I'm glad they use that argument because guess what that is? That's you producing fruit because if you're smart enough that you're able to actually, not on your own, but in God, use what you know mm -hmm. that you now have thrown out the seeds mm -hmm. or you've taken this plant and you've put it in water and you've planted it and you've done something so it begins to grow, that right. it too becomes strong and it too starts to live on its own, though that usually doesn't happen if it's not taken care of and with a lot of love, it takes a lot of love. It's not going to just be thrown to the side and start growing. 
Notice that person who said that, they forgot that they are the ones who cut it and put it in the cup and gave it the water and took care of it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, see, they're still abiding. They got love and they got a connection going on here, don't they? Right. Someone's taking care of them. Someone's loving them. And what happens if things go right? It begins to grow and one day it produces fruit. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we produce fruit. It's very important that we go forth. Without it, you know, he's talking about they can do nothing. Um, you're seeing that it's focused through verse five and six as nonstop, just talking about the vine and how you cannot live without it. You much fruit is whenever it's connected and whenever it's all working together. Um, you know, it scares me a little bit when we get to this one part though, down in five and six, you get to the spot. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. I don't think we need to talk about that that much, but I do want to at least highlight that because that gives you a little bit of a fiery image. Mm -hmm. If you're not in God and you're not doing what's meant to be done, in the day of judgment, people who don't know God, and there's only one way to get to him, and that is through Jesus, and then, like I said, your life changes and you begin to produce fruit. Um this is a horrific penalty of hell. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I'm not willing for that to happen. I'm willing to take my entire life, even if it sometimes feels like I'm in a living hell, as some people put it, trust in God and give it to him and he will get you through it. One way or another, you will get through it. I've seen that with my own personal sickness. Every time I've thought that I was down all the way, some way, somehow, I end up finding God even more and we make it through it. You guys, your prayer helps me. By the way, don't think your prayer does not work. That's why I wanted to say that also. You're part of this whole function here. When we pray for one another, we're giving each other encouragement. We're also asking the Lord and interceding for them so that maybe when they can't pray, you're praying for them. Mm -hmm. And you're doing this together. And what's happening? The Lord is hearing and responding. Right. I mean, think of how many times, if we go back and you do know your Bible, how many times did Moses intercede for Israel? Right. If he hadn't, of how many times would Israel possibly have ended up in hell? Right. Of course, I don't know. I'm not God and I'm not in judgment, but I can tell you every time you turn the page, it seems like it says, and Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. yep. How about your life? Do you have that situation? Are you falling into the same cracks? Does the devil know how to tempt you in the right way where you're not getting right with him? Because if you're not becoming a new creation, then you're still in the old. Mm -hmm. If you're in the old, you're going to eventually wither and you're going to get pruned. And hell is the ultimate punishment. So we need to be aware of that because that's very important. But you know what else is important? Let's talk about joy because it is Palm Sunday. If you know that joy and you know Jesus and you prune and get the evil out of your own life and let him into that, guess what happens? Love gives birth to to love, as the Father hath loved me, also loved his followers. Verse 9, you see where I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. He loves him, and according to that, you're talking about in the same way that God the Father loved the Son completely. We're getting that connection the same way. Right. The more you grow in him, the more that you're going to have that same connection. Jesus loved his disciples even though um, they did rejection and had different issues with them and hardships. He still continued with his love, and he does with you as well. You know, he's not going to go away for you. He's going to be there no matter what. That's what I love about it. If, no matter what you've done, you can always go back to God and ask for forgiveness. So don't think that you're just so evil you can't come back to right. him. For that matter also, don't think that you can't continue to grow in him and that he's not got some plan for you or that you're just not important because you are. Every part of the, of, it, of God is important. He doesn't just That's leave right. you for no reason at That's all. That's right. So what happens though when you start to do that? Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you are starting to live in God, you're going to start to see that he's showing things that's happening. And as the love is being done, you start to see joy. If you feel miserable in life and you feel like you're not accomplishing anything and nothing's right in any shape or form then it's a good sign that you might need God in your life a little more. In fact, oftentimes that's the way you can get some, someone saved. They're miserable. They don't understand or they want to blame God for something that happened. Don't do that. 
Instead, ask God to help you, and he will get you through whatever it is. He'll also give you what happens when you give it to God. Guess what happens is you become a new creature. You're excited about the accomplishments, and the joy begins to occur. Mm -hmm. And as that joy occurs, think about that farmer when he sees his first fruit of the season. Mm -hmm. Or even at the end of the season when he has maybe buckets full of fruit that's where he's doing his last go through of harvest and look at what all that hard work did. Right. <clears throat> and it inspires you to work harder. His full joy. Right. You follow me on that, guys? Mm -hmm. That's right. But more importantly, love one another. That's where we're talking about verse 12 and 13. That is the commandment that we've been talking about the whole time. As you can see. Right. It says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Wow, wow. Would you lay down your life for your friends? Are we close enough that we're part of the family of God? Well, you, you're God's children. And once you give yourself to him, it's just going to grow more into the family of God. That's how that works. And he's going to take good care of you. Are you going to take care of him by doing your part? Are you going to go forth and look and be there for someone else if they need you and help them? Are you going to continue to judge and live in your old life and just eventually get cut off and thrown to the fire? No, I, I'm thinking that we want to keep going forward and do what needs to be done because I like that joy idea, don't you guys? Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we see verse 14 and 15, ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Friends of God, can you imagine that? Do you want to have a friend like God? <laughs> That's the best friend to have. I'm telling it you right now. Any better than that. Jesus made it known to his disciples and all that the Father told him, you know, everything that was going on. See how that connection was. The Father told Jesus. Jesus tells the disciples. They live as they're together, right? Mm -hmm. They begin to grow, and you see all this happen and go forth and bring forth fruit, right? Right. Once you do that, though, guess what? As long as you keep doing what you're supposed to do, the fruit's going to continue through harvest. It's going to go through the next season, and it's going to continue to go elsewhere, correct? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's amazing. It should always remain and Produce keep going. Produce more fruit. That's right. And the vine's not going to perish. It's going to keep going and growing and growing and growing, right? Right. It's, it's consistent. And you're going to always find your answers if you're lost or you don't know what to do. You know, in, in our day and age, people might look at the weather channel to get things or look at something like to see how what's going on with the drought or something and try different tricks to help their gardening and different things. But I tell you right now, the one thing that seems to work in anything that's wrong if you're having a problem in life and you're dry or you're not knowing what's happening and you're in any type of severity of a problem, you go to God through Jesus in prayer. And I guarantee you, he will show you the way. That's how that works, guys. So don't forget to ever ask. And when you ask God something, you do it. You hear me all the time say it in Jesus' name. That's right. And it is indeed, as you saw what we said, his command is to love one another. So make sure that you love people, that you treat them just the way Jesus does you, because you're going to be judged the same way. So, you know, you don't need him to look at you and say, hey, why should I? You didn't, which, you know, that, that's a big deal. You, you've really got to focus on that command, love one another. If somebody gets on your nerves, why don't you go, when you get a chance, why don't you just say a prayer? Why don't you stay calm and just say a prayer? It may just be somebody's having a bad day. Mm -hmm. I think we all get that in this day and age. You know what I mean? Don't let something that's a bad day stop what could be a good friendship. Right, because the bad fruit can produce more bad fruit. <laughs> That's exactly right, and we don't need that. No. So, you know, it's just so important that we do all of this. Jesus talked with his disciples about it. Everything's happening where he's telling them what to do, and we get the truth out of this, and I call that truth inspired, wouldn't you? That's right. All right. Father in heaven, thank you for letting us be inspired by your truth, the word, Lord. Help us to be a part and just be able to grow and not just grow, but grow to the point where we produce fruit, to the point where you are happy with us, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray that you be with us this week and help us in anything that comes our way, looking for opportunities to do something, to help somebody if we need to, and even find ways to love people like you do, Lord. Find a way to do something special this week, God. Maybe to even do something that it's just showing love beyond any other way, the way that you do for us. It's amazing what you do, Lord. Don't let us ever forget how much you care for us and how much 
pruning and stuff that we have in life to still be up do as you mold and make us to be what you need us to be and what you've called us to do. Give us strength, energy, and guidance this week as we head towards Easter. We thank you for everything. Please be with Truth Inspired and all those people that are having issues. There's a lot of people that are sick. Please let them know they're being prayed for right now. And let this just be a wonderful week. In Jesus' name we pray always for strength, energy, and guidance. Amen. Amen.